The wonders found on planet Saturn by the Cassini mission were unprecedented. Not only did we find things that were beyond strangeness with this mission, but also we confirmed that the giant planet is not exactly what it seems. You may be surprised to learn that the worship of Saturn is taking place in everyday life. The god Saturn is dubbed the Lord of the Rings. And it's the very reason why we wear rings on our fingers for ceremonial purposes. This cult is strange because when you begin to understand what is going on, it actually makes sense. But at the same time, it infers ungodly meanings. In 1610, Galileo began studying the giant planet using the telescope. When he viewed the planet for the first time, he saw something strange. He thought he saw three stars together a big one in the middle, and two little stars. He knew they weren't really stars, but what were they? It turned out that Galileo was the first person of our era to see the rings of Saturn. The gods of Egypt have a role to play in the madness. Saturn is the father of the goddess Isis, and one inscription of the goddess reads, I am Isis, queen of this country. I was instructed by Mercury no one can destroy the laws which I have established. I am the eldest daughter of Saturn, most ancient of the gods. It is also said that the black cube of Mecca is highly symbolic of the planet and the movement of the people around the holy relic is to signify the rings of Saturn. Stunning, if true. In the Roman and Greek writings, Saturn is seen as a cruel deity and summarized as follows. With the deposing of his father, Saturn became the ruler of the universe for untold ages and he reigned with his sister, Opus, who also became his wife. It was prophesied that one day Saturn would lose power when one of his children would depose him. To prevent this from happening, each time Opus delivered a child, Saturn would immediately swallow it. When her sixth child, Jupiter, Zeus, was born, Opus had him spirited away to the island of Crete. She then wrapped a stone in his swaddling clothes. Her deception was complete when Saturn swallowed it, thinking it was the child. When Jupiter was grown, he secured the job of cupbearer to his father. With the help of Gaia, his grandmother, Jupiter fed his father a potion that caused him to vomit up Jupiter's five siblings, Vesta, Hestia, Ceres, Demeter, Juno, Hera, Pluto, Hades, and Neptune, Poseidon. Saturn always had a negative, if not evil, significance. In ancient times, it has been called the Greater Malefic, which was opposed to Jupiter, the Greater Benefic. Saturn is esoterically associated with man's limitations, restrictions, death, and decay. His Greek name was Kronos, the ruler of time, time being the main factor inevitably leading to the death of mortals. Saturn took the highest position in terms of importance in ancient times. Since in our time, more and more space probes pass by a huge cosmic body, its beauty and mystery deepen. When the Voyager mission flew past Saturn in the 1980s, they discovered a whimsical hexagonal shape in the polar regions of the planet. Moreover, this structure seemed completely artificial due to the previously verified size and almost ideal shape. At the same time, pictures and theories followed, which ripened for about 20 years until the Cassini device visited Saturn in the summer of 2004. The pictures taken were of high quality, but they did not provide a clear explanation for the nature of the big hexagon. In addition, they did not provide an alternative to people who simply did not want to accept the cloud formation proposed as an explanation for NASA. Some people insist that this structure is proof of a reasonable design from a distant past. Perhaps this is a tracking device or even some kind of space filling station. Hydrogen and helium-3 are abundantly present on Saturn and can be used for space travel. In many ancient records, Saturn was referred to as the Sun. For example, the ancient Babylonian text describes Saturn as the ghost of the Sun. The Maya believe that the sun that we see today was different in former times. In the book Saturn, the Ancient God of the Sun, author David Talbot notes an obvious mismatch between Saturn and the sun in ancient times, and that this mismatch could not be a coincidence. 
Talbot argues that different figures throughout history deliberately distinguished Saturn from our sun, calling it the best sun, the original sun, the central sun. According to certain alternative thinkers, Saturn is closely connected with elite secret societies that supposedly worship the sun or the sun god, on which all major religions are allegedly built. If Saturn really was a star and the central sun in antiquity, then the importance of Saturn for secret societies and their esoteric rituals becomes quite understandable. Though the mystery of certain theories regarding Saturn may never come to light, one questionable thought stands out, that being that the planet Saturn collided with the planet that now forms the asteroid belt, giving Earth the moon, causing the Great Flood, and ripping Mars of its atmosphere. Yes, you got it. There is a chance that Saturn may be Nibiru, but that doesn't make sense unless Saturn had a separate orbit at some point, right? Worldwide drawings and symbols of the once dominant luminary show of disk with rays, a disk with spokes, a disk with a central orb or eye, a disk with a crescent upon it. Today we require a powerful telescope to see Saturn as a disk. We must fly a space probe close to the planet to see rays and spokes. Even then the spokes are intermittent and dark. The ancient astronomers, however, described the spokes as those of a cosmic wheel. They were streams of fire, the glory of heaven. The worldwide astronomical designation of the celestial pole become crucial pieces in a puzzle. For this reason, the language establishes beyond any reasonable doubt that the pole is the remembered location of the archaic sun god Saturn. In modern astronomical terms, a planet at the celestial pole is a preposterous idea. All the planets in our sky, together with the Earth, move on a common plane around the Sun, so that from Earth we see the planets moving on roughly the same arc across the sky as the Sun. The paradox is glaring. No planet today approaches the Earth's celestial pole, and yet the ancient tradition of the polar Sun confronts us everywhere. The Babylonians were apparently the first to develop systematic observations of the planets, and they recorded the celestial motions with considerable skill. But in laying the foundations of later astronomy, they also preserved a critical link with the past. Again and again, they asserted a claim that could only appear preposterous to the modern translator. They declared that the distant planets were the gods of former times. Sumerian myths say the rights and standards of kingship descended from the central luminary An, founder of the Golden Age. In Babylonian myth, the Sumerian An appears as Anu, first in the line of gods and kings, and according to the best authorities of Babylonian astronomy, the god Anu was mysteriously linked to the planet Saturn. What makes this identity stand out is the degree to which one nation after another repeated the same connection. It's an interesting fact not often noticed that the ancient Hebrews regarding their race as having been Saturnian in the beginning when they lived under the rule of the creator El. Indeed, the consistency with which early astronomy identified Saturn as the former creator king is extraordinary. The Zoroastrians of ancient Persia knew Saturn as the heaven-sustaining Zervan, the king and lord of the Long Dominion. The Iranian god King Yima, founder of the Golden Age, was also linked to Saturn. The Chinese mythical emperor Hongti, first in a great dynasty of kings and mythological founder of the Taoist religion, was identified astronomically as the planet Saturn. Even the Tahitians recall of the god Fedoti, the planet Saturn, that he was the king. When scholars today look back at this esoteric connection to the Sabbath and Saturn, they see little more than an oddity of minor significance. This is because historians as a whole have missed the ancient link of Saturn to kingship, to the origins of civilization, and to the roots of ancient myth and symbol. But there is an even more significant aspect of the Saturn mystery. Here is a remarkable fact. Though numerous figures of the universal monarch are translated conventionally as the sun god, the celestial power invoked by the world's first religions 
is not the body we call the sun today. In fact, the star worshippers specifically distinguished it from our sun by calling it best sun, the primeval sun, the central sun. Natives of Mexico recall that prior to the present age, an exemplary sun ruled the world, but this was not the sun of today. His name was Quetzalcoatl. The Maya maintained essentially the same idea, calling the primeval sun god Huracan. The Incas of Peru spoke of a former sun superior to the present sun. When it comes to the well-known sun gods of early man, nothing in the mythological record seems to unnerve the experts. As to the original solar character of the Greek Helios, Latin Sol, Assyrian Shamash, and Egyptian Ra, scholars have maintained an unwavering confidence. And surely you can see why. Could it really be doubted that Helios, radiating light from his brow, is our sun? In Egypt, countless hymns to the god Ra exalt him as the divine power opening the day. In the same way, Assyrian and Babylonian texts depict the god Shamash as the supreme light of the sky, governing the cycle of day and night. Such images will seem to leave no question as to the solar character of these gods. And yet the profile of the great sun gods presents a fascinating dilemma. During the past century, several authorities noticed that Greek and Latin astronomical texts show a mysterious confusion of the sun with Saturn. Though the designation seems bizarre, the expression Star of Helios or Star of Sol was applied to Saturn. Of the Babylonian star worshippers, the chronicler Diodorus writes, To the one we call Saturn, they give a special name, Sun Star. One fact beyond dispute is that the word Helios did become the Greek word for our sun, just as the Latin Sol gave his name to our sun. The same can be said of the older Shamash and Ra. The names of these gods became the names of the solar orb, but that's where the connection with our sun ends and the mystery of Saturn begins. What do you guys make of this connection? Is Saturn the ancient central sun of the solar system? What's going on? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.